So just as we begin this season of Lent, it's always a, a somewhat, a somewhat, a somewhat comical spectacle actually uh, to see people walking around with mud on their foreheads. I mean, if anyone were to come from abroad who isn't maybe a, a Catholic and just see a lot of people walking around the city with just with dirt on their foreheads, you could imagine they'd want to take, take out a little Kleenex and just clean it off for them, or you know, the, the maternal instinct in moms is to, to clean off the dirt. But it's, so it's it's it's, it's, a, it's an unusual kind of tradition that we have that we would receive ashes on our foreheads ashes on our foreheads it's again maybe we're, we're used to it when you step back and look at this what on earth does it mean because if we have no idea what it means then it's pointless so on ash wednesday we receive ashes the ashes are made from the olive branches from the previous easter so last year's easter the branches are burned <coughs> the ashes are collected and this makes the, the the ash then for for today so it's a sign of what well the sign the ashes are put on the sign of a cross. So this is a sign of resurrection, actually. It's a sign of hope. It's a sign of love. A person can have no greater love than to lay down their life. So a person can have no, no greater love for someone else than to die for them. So this is the sign put on each person that you are infinitely loved by God. God thinks you're worth dying for. That's, that's quite a statement. You know, like God, the creator of the universe, thinks I'm worth dying for. And he did this for me. Died on a cross. So it's, it's a sign also that we're realistic, right? Time, life isn't always going to be easy. Crosses will come our way. Uh, sickness and bereavement and, and misunderstandings and all those kind of things will happen. So ash is generally, it's a, ash is a sign of death. You know, you can't grow anything in ash. Ash is no good. Ash is all the, all the good is taken out of the, the wood or whatever is left is, is, is practically useless. So it's also a reminder uh, of this kind of reality uh, of our lives that there will be difficulties, there will be sickness, there will be, there will be illness, but it always finishes in glory. All of our, our illnesses and sicknesses and difficulties can finish in glory through the power of God. And that's where this season is typically dedicated to prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. So in prayer, it's a wonderful consolation to be able to turn our hearts to God in every need. Uh, in every sadness, in every loss. And to be able to say, Lord, I, I don't fully understand what's going on here, or maybe I don't feel capable of doing what you're asking me to do. Uh, I don't feel good enough. I don't feel strong enough. But Lord, you are enough. And what's so interesting in prayer is that even if we don't receive the direct answer to what we've asked for, say, for example, I'm asking for a healing. Not everyone who prays for healing is healed. But the point of our prayer should be Every time I pray, I don't necessarily get exactly what I asked, but I always get Jesus. I always get the Lord. So every time I'm, I'm, I'm turning my heart to him in prayer, I mightn't get the answer immediately or the way I want. Now, very often we do. Very often we do get what we want. Very often we do get what we prayed for. But it can happen that, that the Lord uh, answers things differently. So in my prayer, I don't necessarily get exactly what I asked for, but I always get Jesus. And that's the whole point of prayer, that we get, we get God. Fasting, even in fasting, fasting should never be understood as, oh, you know, I'll, I'll lose the, the, the holiday, the, the, the COVID stone or whatever they're calling it these days. You know, the, the people have been maybe chunking out a bit and they just, yeah, so now we'll, we'll fast and get it down. That's not the purpose of fasting. The purpose of fasting is to get Jesus. So I renounce something good in order to get Jesus. I renounce something that, you know, food or sleep, whatever it may be, uh, dedicate more time to prayer, uh, and in order to do, in order to get what? In order to get Jesus. And then almsgiving. I give, not because I've got so much that I just want to splurge out, but I give because I see Jesus in the other. I see the dignity of the other person and how they deserve to be loved. They deserve the basic necessities of life and so on. So prayer, fasting, and almsgiving all have to do with Jesus. The ashes have to do with Jesus. Our whole lives should be oriented around Jesus. And so we ask the Lord today as we begin our Lenten season, and as we receive, we bless now and receive the ashes, that we will be reminded that we're infinitely loved, and that in all of our difficulties, in all of our difficulties, we're called to find Jesus, our Saviour. <laughs>